Okay, follow along with me here today on how to repair a broken pin on a picture tube. Uh, well, more specifically, you're not actually repa repairing or replacing the pin because it's not quite possible. But I'm going to show you how to salvage, I should say, probably a better way to describe this, how to salvage a picture tube that has broken a pin. Uh, because if you got a tube here that's busted a pin, you think, okay, great, now it's a giant paperweight. Well, no, it's not a paperweight because it can be repaired. Uh, there's just a very specific procedure you have to do here in order to get this done. So the story behind this is uh, I have a video coming out after this one. I'm kind of doing this out of order. I worked on a K7000 number two in the repair-a-thon of five. It was just an absolute nightmare. And I got towards the end and I thought I had fixed it and I powered it up. And I got high voltage and it worked, but I had no picture, I had no raster, and I had no heater glow in the neck. I'm like, well, that's odd because I just had it on the previous power-up attempt. I had heater glow, I had high voltage, I had a raster, all that. So now I had gone backwards. I lost my heater voltage and I lost my raster, but I still had high voltage. So it just made absolutely no sense. So when you have 6.3 volts at the neck, but no, uh, no neck glow and no raster, then the only thing it could possibly be is an issue with the picture tube. So I took the neck off and I removed the guide here and look look at this see the, see what's happening here the uh, this pin <laughs> this pin is staying with the guide that is not a good thing and it just so happens that pin is our heater voltage pin so our heater voltage pin is busted out of the tube now it's not surprising uh, I um, you know I fully expected this to happen at some point because this is my test tube that I use for all of my Wells Gardner testing Basically any 25 inch Wells Gardner standard res monitor, uh, or I should say any standard res Wells Gardner chassis, 25 inch, I use this tube for my testing. And all these years of on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off on the neck uh, finally broke a pin and it just so happens to be the heater voltage pin. So uh, if you got a tube that has uh, 6.3 volts at the neck, uh, but you don't have heater voltage, it's most likely an issue with the tube, whether the heater is bad, uh, whether uh, you've got a busted pin like this, I can't say, but the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your little guide here. And the easiest way to do that is just get you like a little razor knife or something. And because uh, these things have uh, not epoxy, but there's like this RTV inside of there that keeps this from coming off. And the easiest way to remove this is spray a little alcohol in there. Uh, get you some 99% alcohol and just uh, kind of wiggle this around to where there's a gap in there and spray the alcohol down in there and that will soften up that RTV and kind of release its grip. Then you can use your little razor knife here if you got one of these and just kind of get in there and work that work that glue loose and then as much as you can try and be very careful not to damage the glass. Then you can get this off of there. So with this off of there, you can then start working on getting that pin replaced. So uh, sometimes you can be lucky and they'll break off right at the edge. But in this case, it broke off down, down deep inside that glass there. So, of course, this is under vacuum, so you do not want to disturb the vacuum or it does become a giant paperweight. And there's no mistaking losing the vacuum. Uh, you'll hear all the inrush of air. And <laughs> you'll just be like, well, uh, you'll be hating life. So what I do on how to repair this is you're not going to be able to replace the pen. You can't replace the pen. Let me zoom out here. You cannot replace the pin, and you cannot solder the pin back to the stub. It's not going to work. It's not possible. You won't be able to do it. So what you have to do is grind away the, the glass to expose the nub. Uh, then you want to use a fiberglass pin to scrape off the coating that's left on the nub. Then you can take a solid strand wire like this. I just have a long green uh, solid strand wire. And you want to solder the wire to that nub. Then you'll put your protector back on, uh, put a little more RTV and put some RTV back in there to replace the stuff that you removed, uh, especially on the nub. You'll want to solder this to the nub, pack a little RTV in there, push this thing back on to act as a strain relief. Then you, what you'll do is you'll take that other end of the wire and just solder it to the back side of your neck board. Then that's really the only way that I'm going to be able to salvage this or really the only way you're going to be able to salvage it if you have this problem in the future yourself. So get yourself a Dremel with a bit 
a little sanding bit like that. And we're going to grind a little bit away here on this glass until we can expose and get down to that nub. So once that's complete, then we can use our... Doo -doo -doo. Oh, over here. We can tin... We can tin our wire. We can just do that now, actually. What we'll do is we will use a little flux here and just kind of tin our solid strand wire. Like uh, so. There we go. So that's prepped. Now the fun part begins. So let's zoom in here. Try and get a higher angle on this. And we're going to have to try and dremel this away until we can expose that nub. And it's not going to be easy, so we'll start on the lowest setting here. Yeah, we got to get down in there. That's that's a ways away here. getting there. Where's my brush? Okay. Get rid of all that glass and I can see the pin but we have got a lot more glass to remove because we have to be able to scrape the coating off that nub which means that nub has to at least be flush with the glass and uh we're not making any progress, so let's go to the next higher setting. see something here. Well, yeah, we got quite a ways to go here.
Okay, I think we've got it exposed, the little nub in there. And I, uh, one of the benefits of using the Dremel is that it scrapes away the coating for you when you're drilling there. So, not sure if you can see. Oh, nope, you can't. I got a crappy camera. But it's basically, I knew I'd set that pin down and lose it. And I set the pin down, and I don't know where I set it. I just wanted to see what the depth was that we had left to go, and I set that pin down, and it disappeared into the ninth dimension. She gone! And, uh, yeah, I don't know where the hell it's at. Alright, anyway, so, doesn't matter. Um, let's... The pin is right here. And... Or the nub. It just seems like it's a lot deeper than... Eh, we gotta keep going here. Again, you go too deep and you break that vacuum, you're toast. So, a little bit at a time. I mean, I can see it. It's right there. It's right, it's right there. So, I wonder if we could go ahead and just try to get our wire on there. Because that's about as deep as you could... I mean, for this... I've seen some break off right at the surface. And I've seen some break off this deep in there. And when they're that deep in there, it's tough. So just wonder if we could get this in there yet. And um, I'm going to kind of make this, it's not gonna look pretty, but we're gonna shove a little flux in there. And we're gonna see if we can get this to stick in there. It's probably not gonna work, but we can try it. And Let's just, oh, sorry about that. Let's just see if we can perform a miracle here. Nope, I don't think we have enough of it exposed yet. It's right there. My soldering iron is touching the nub. I can feel it. It's there. It's right. Th you can see it. It's right there. Don't. We exposed it. It's there. Now it's just going to come down to being able to get this thing to solder onto here. And um, I thought this was a solid strain wire, but it's not. But it'll work just fine. I actually need to probably expose. Well, I don't really need to expose more of it. But eh, yeah, uh, I need to. We'll flip it around the opposite direction here. Because I need to actually have a little bit more wire exposed to bend that around the, the tube there. I realize you can't see what I'm doing. I just went to the other side of the wire and I'm tending this other side of the wire here. Because I need to be able to bend this around the tube once it's soldered on there. Like I say, you'll, it's going to be difficult to do this if you don't expose or get the uh, A, expose the nub, and then B, look at that. We did it. Oh, we didn't do it. <laughs> uh, you have to scrape off the coating. Otherwise, it's just not going to solder to it. it won't, it's not going to work. So... Let's clean this again here. Let's clean all this off of here. Okay, we'll try this again here. All right. You have to scrape away the coating 
on that pin, that nub. And we'll try the fiberglass pin, if we can get that down in there. And I'm uh, just not going to be able to... That's not going to do shit. Try the trip tip of the Dremel here. Okay. Let's try. You can see from this whole process, it's very tricky. But right there is the pin. Bloop, or the nub. I keep saying pin, but there's the nub. Bloop, right there. It's exposed. It's out of the glass. Now we're, we've done the tough part, well, relatively tough. Now we just have to get this uh, solder to it um, and have it stay there. And then once you successfully accomplish that, then you throw the RTV in there and uh, with the guide RTV in there, it should never give you a problem again. But if it does, you know what to do. Just solder it back on. Come on, little buddy, get in there. Oh, we had it. It was on there. We had it. Now I'm blocking my view here of the... Okay, give it a moment. Nope. Oh, man. I'm gonna try this again here. Cut off what we had. That's why the single strand wire is a lot better. I thought this was single strand, but it's not. It looks like single strand until so you heat it up and then it spreads out, so. Single strand is better, however, or I should say it in single strand, solid, solid, the solid wire, not the one with the individual strands in it. That's what I mean by single strand. So, let's try again here. wonder if I can do it this way. Uh, well, that didn't work, but we'll go with it. More surface area, maybe. And give it a pull. Hey, I think we got it. Look at that. We did it. Now the question remains, can we bend this? to where we can plug in Okay, it's bent under there. Mm, ah, it's, it's going to it's going to come off. I just know it's going to come off when I try and pull on it like this. I'm going to flatten it. Okay, there we go. Now, you can see that it's flat. Uh, turn this here. It's flat as it's, it's going to get. That's why I wanted to do extra long here, because now I got this piece here that needs to be flat against the tube, but it's not flat against the tube. But let's see if we can, how far that sticks out from here with this on here. Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, I need to trim that off, or if anything, I need to actually get... Ah, oh, dang it, see? Well, that gives me an opportunity to uh, get rid of some of this. Extra. 
If we did it once, we can do it again. Let me get rid of this extra coating on here. Okay. So we did it once, we can do it again here. Let's just go like this. Didn't get it in there far enough. Nope. So if we bend that. Okay, that's more than sufficient. So let's trim this off and start fresh with a little bit of flux. Man, that first connection there, that was solid. S-O-L-I-D. Solid. So let's try it again. Get that in there. And heat it. Come on. You can do it. Apply a little pressure. And give it a few seconds. Well, it's on there, but it's not secure. Let's tr try it again. Nope. Okay. Well, I had to walk away for a few minutes and come back because this was, this was getting me pretty frustrated. We were doing so well. Everything went great. We got the nub exposed. Um, we got it scraped off, all the coating scraped off so we could solder to it, solder the wire to it successfully, and it just kind of all went downhill from there when I tried to straighten out the actual um, conductive, the part of the wire that's through the, you know, I tried to bend it flat to sit against the glass and it broke off and everything just kind of went to hell from there. But I have it done now. Uh, you saw the procedure. There really wasn't much hidden that you didn't see when I was doing this. So it's, oh, sorry. It is successfully soldered to the nub. You can see that we have security here. And again, you can't solder directly to glass. So there, if it's secure like this, then it's definitely soldered to this, the nub. And we are not touching that other pin there, as you can see, plenty of clearance there. And we also have plenty of clearance now with that uh, sitting oh, flat against the glass. We have plenty of clearance for our guide to sit flat against the glass, like so. Uh, well, you can't tell if it's flat, but I can't tell it's flat, but once the RTV is in place, this should sit, oh, roughly like that, flat enough anyway. Then all you have to do is take that wire and solder it to the back of the neck board, and uh, it should work. So if you get a busted pin on a tube, that's how you fix it. So now what we need to do is I'm not going to... What we need to do, I'm not going to actually put the RTV on here yet because it takes hours for it to set up. Uh, so what I want to do is just kind of leave it like this and plug the neck board on and get a chassis on here and then solder this to the back of the neck and make sure it works. If it does, then I'll toss the RTV in there and hold it, you know, put some type of tape on here or something to hold it flat so it dries. And you'll never have to worry about this again. But there is one issue is you don't want this wire to break off. You know, if you keep constantly bending it back and forth, we're trying to hook it up and unhook it, hook it up and unhook it, you could possibly break it here at the edge. Uh, so you kind of want to make a strain relief if you can. I'm not really sure we could possibly... Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that, figure that out later. But for now, let's just get a chassis on here and make sure this works. All right, so this is a U5000 tube, so I might as well put a U5000 on it. So we have a working, known good U5000 installed. I have the neck board back on. Uh, I went ahead and secured the wire to the screw here of the brace for the convergence ring assembly. So now we have a stress relief or strain relief, so it just wiggles back and forth on here and not put stress, undue stress on our actual solder joint. The neck installs with ease. You can see it comes right off and goes right back on and we're still secure and the pin that's missing is pin according to this well it's the heater pin but if you look here it's pin number marked as seven 
And seven corresponds to, seven corresponds to nothing. I'm sorry, it's nine. Nine, five, seven, nine. Nine is the pin in the position that's missing, just the way it's marked. It's not pin nine, it's the heater pin, but in that position, it's according to that, you know, the five, seven, nine, six there, it's nine, and nine corresponds to pin 10 right there. So we need to go to that same pin on the back, which should be this one there. Should be this one right here. That should be pin 10. Yes, it is, so we'll solder our wire onto there. But first, let's turn this on and see if, what it looks like with no uh, heater voltage there. So here we go, one, two, three. Okay, comes on. And I'm gonna turn the light out here and we are getting absolutely nothing. Now, if I were to take this wire and just, you know what, let's give it an actual image. Let me grab the TPG, turn it on. We are set to standard res. Let's grab, oh, where's my connector here? I'm so unorganized. Here we go. Okay, so we'll plug this into here and plug this into here, like so. Now we have an image, or we have a signal, I should say. We have a, a RGB signal, and as we can see, nothing, and no heater glow. Now, if I was to take this wire and just touch it to pin 10, I'm not going to solder it. We'll just touch it to pin 10 and make sure it's the right one, which is this one, and it's going to warm up here. It should. There you go. <laughs> now I'm going to take that wire and, and uh, remove it from pin 10. And now that we the wire is off, and watch what happens. As the heater cools down, so there we go, successful repair. So what we need to do now, turn this off, turn that off, and we need to solder that wire directly to pin 10, which I'll do here. I have to use two hands, so I'm gonna set the camera down. Actually, just probably just turn it off. And I'll come back with that wire soldered to the neck board and we'll test it again. Okay, successfully soldered to pin 10. And of course, you're not gonna be able to remove the neck board uh, or remove the chassis, I should say. You're not gonna be able to remove the chassis completely without desoldering that wire again, but the you know the important thing here is that this is now fixed and it is possible to salvage a tube with a busted pin as we just saw so i have again the wire is fed through the uh the guide and secured there for strain relief so if you do have to take the neck board off it shouldn't pop the solder joint and it just solders right to the back of the neck board and you want to make sure you use a nice thick gauge wire not like a 24 gauge or something to pass the uh, current through and I believe this is a 18 gauge uh, it should be a solid strand but it's you know solid enough so that should work just fine sufficiently to do this and uh, yeah, you saw the process so now final result here TPG is still on let's see if this works okay come back on We'll move this around here, and do we get a raster? Yes, we do. All right, uh, let's do H position over. Uh, close enough, contrast is way too high. Brightness. Okay, there you go. Successful repair of a busted pin on a CRT neck. It is possible. There you go. So again, be careful. Uh, don't remove too much glass, or you'll you'll uh, fix or you'll ruin the vacuum. <laughs> trying to fix this is what I meant to say. Don't remove too much glass trying to fix this, uh, or you'll ruin the vacuum, and then it is a paperweight. But if you have a busted pin on a CRT, is it possible to fix? Yes, it is. You cannot replace the pin, but you can have this option here to make it work. So it takes a little bit of skill. You know, trial, trial and error, you know, you may mess it up, make it worse, I don't know. But, you know, I was having trouble myself, and I've done this many times. I'll say many, two or three. But even then, you know, I was having trouble too. But stick with it, persevere, and, yeah, there you go. Perfect. 
So now the only last step is to put some, take this all back apart, pull the guide up, uh, throw some RTV in there, stick it back on, let it dry, and then I shouldn't have to worry about that solder joint really ever popping again. Now, if another pin breaks off in the future, hey, I'll fix it the same way. However, I am not gonna be using this as a test tube anymore because of this right here. So I'm gonna have to move on to probably another U5000 tube. Uh, I've got a couple U5000s. I may just use one of those tubes for the universal application of testing 5000s and everything and every other 25 inch standard medium res Wells Gardner. So uh, yeah, but for the purposes of this video, uh, I think we're done. I'll do this off camera. It's pretty self-explanatory. So there we go. Hopefully you learned something. I appreciate it. Miracles do happen. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe and stay tuned for more.